Okay, in this set of videos, um, what we're going to do is that we're going to take a look at uh, trying to capitalize on our graphing strategies from uh, using the uh, trigonometric graphing lessons uh, prior to this, uh, these lessons here, and uh, apply them to some applications here, or some, uh, some word problems, some scenarios, okay? So, this first one, it says, uh, Dr. Fitzwhiskers is floating on a tube in a wave pool. It says at one second, time equals one second, uh, Dr. Fitzwhiskers reaches a maximum height of 12 meters above the bottom of the pool. And at nine seconds, Dr. Fitzwhiskers reaches a minimum height of two meters above the bottom of the pool. So what I like to do is that I like to sketch out what's going on first. And it might, and I, I'm going to home in on this part first, this little bit of information here. Okay, it says at one second, Dr. Fitzwhiskers reaches a maximum height of 14 meters above the pool. So. It looks like my input right here is going to be time. And it looks like it is going to be in seconds, okay? Because that's what we're given. And then on the, um, for the y-axis, it looks like we're going to go, um, let me write this out real quick. Okay, so just basically meters above the bottom of the pool. So... And I'm just going to put a, a starting point here. It says at one second, okay, um, it's going to, Dr. Fitzwhiskers is going to be 14 meters above the bottom. So if I make a point here and I call it 1, 14, okay, that's going to represent that his maximum height where he's floating around on this wave, okay? So of course, in a, a wave, if you're floating around on an inner tube, um, you're going to go down as well. You're not going to keep just going up. Uh, that would be bad. And so the second bit of information that we're going to get is uh, t equals 9 seconds, okay? Or what 9 seconds, after 9 seconds rather, um, reaches the minimum height of 2 meters. So if I look over here, this is probably going to be, and I'm ju just doing like a, a roundabout sketch here, I'm trying to put all the pieces together and he's two meters above the bottom of the pool. So um, what we're looking at is maybe something that is going to look like this, right? So floating around here. And one of the ways that we can complete the graph, and that doesn't look like a maximum, so I'm going to tidy this up a little tiny bit here. Maybe that's better. Okay. And... Um, <clears throat> we're going to, assuming that the waves are going to stay constant, okay, is that we want another point that is going to be somewhere out here, because these are going to be just like sine and cosine, they're going to be periodic, okay? So, if I'm looking, and it took, right, if it took this point right here, which is going to be, and I don't need the, uh, the vertical part, but I do need the horizontal part, if it's going to take eight seconds, to get to the bottom of the pool, or I'm sorry, get to the bottom of the wave, then it's going to take another eight seconds uh, to go ahead and get back up top. And so it would be reasonable to say that this point, though it's not given to us, is going to be, you take this nine and you add eight to it, which is going to give us 17, and then it's going to max out at that 14 that we have. So 17, 14 would be the uh, point that is kind of like implied on the sine wave here. So what I'm going to do is clean this up a little tiny bit and then uh, draw the wave in there and get the business. Okay, so that's the first part of this uh, sketching that. And that's going to be really important that we get a nice sketch because that's going to help us in part B. And due to the size of some of these videos um, on YouTube that I'm uploading, I'm going to have to break these up into a few different parts. And so this is going to be the, uh, the first part of example... Uh, one and on to the next part. Okay, now we have to build the function. Okay, and so what we want to do is that we want to try and um, get all the pieces that right here. Okay, and put them all together in a rewarding way. So the first thing that I want to look at is that 
this trig. What trigonometric function is going to best model this thing? And it looks like it could be cosine, right? Because cosine goes like this and then back down. And that seems to be the way that this uh, particular problem is modeled out. Therefore, I'm going to go ahead and say that it's going to be best modeled by a cosine wave, okay? So, how do we find some other pieces here? So, looking at the A that we need, which is the amplitude, we would need to know where kind of like the center of this is, okay? Okay, of that sine wave in order for us to um, find out what the amplitude is because the amplitude, if you remember, is going to be the distance between the peaks and valleys uh, back from the center, kind of like equilibrium point. And so, how would I find that? And so, if I look, the distance in between these are going to be 16, right? And so, if I go and I say the distance, oops, I take that back, that is not 16. Uh, the distance in between them is going to be 12. So, um, so that means is that I'm going to say, all right, well, if it's 12, then it had to move 6 in this direction, 6 in this direction, 6 in this direction, okay? And those are not 16s, those are the distances, okay? And again, the way that I got that 12, in case you didn't see it, is just the 14 minus 2 is 12. I accidentally added them earlier. And so, um, we're looking at the amplitude is going to be 6, okay? So we just want to kind of put that off to the side. Now we got something a little bit trickier for B and C, and I'm going to show you how to do those. Okay, so B is always going to be, in my opinion, one of the more tricky uh, things to get. And so I want to start with uh, some facts that we already know, all right? So first of all, we know in any function with sine and cosine that the period is going to equal 2 pi divided by b, okay? And so that's an important fact. Now, in this one, we're actually, we can find out what the period is before we can find b, which is uncommon um, based on what we've done so far. So to find the period, remember the period is when it starts to repeat itself. So go, measuring the distance from the two uh, maximums there, is going to give us 16, right? We would have 17 minus 1, and that's going to give us 16, okay? So, and given that um, the period is 16, we can solve for b by just combining these two facts, okay? So I'm going to set, so let 16 equal the period, and then solve for b. So I would have 16 equals 2 pi divided by b, and then just do some cross multiplying uh, and whatnot, and it looks like b is going to be equal to, uh, let's see, pi over 8, all right? So you're just doing, again, some cross multiplying there with the algebra, and that will give you pi over 8. All right, so it looks like we got one of the harder parts out of the way. So let's tackle C. Again, for C, um, just like with when we we're finding out what B was, is that um, we're given that information or we can derive that information kind of quickly uh, by looking at the graph. So if you look kind of in your upper left-hand corner here, this distance is one, right? Away from the actual y-axis. And so therefore that means is that it was shifted the graph was shifted um, one unit to the right. So something important that we can note that is that if something shifted to the right, we know that C is going to be negative because it always goes in the opposite direction, right? If it's going positive, then we know that C must be negative. Now, let's set up what we know about C, okay? So a phase shift, and I'm just going to go PS equals, right? And then we would have C divided by B. We know the phase shift, okay, and I'm going to leave this, we already know that the sign is negative, so I'm just going to go ahead and say that it's going to be 1, okay? And um, we already know what B is, uh, because we found it out in the last part, which is pi over 8. 
So now we can throw that in uh, to this part and solve it out. Okay, so the phase shift is one. C is what we're solving for here. And then B is pi over eight. And so therefore, we're just gonna multiply each side by pi over eight here. And that's gonna go over here. And then at the end of the day, we get C equals pi over eight, but we know it's negative because we're going to the right. And so that's that. Okay, so almost done. We got some, uh, some parts to uh, final build and D. So um, let's take a look. Okay, so for D, um, that's not uh, too difficult for us to, uh, to get because it is going to just be um, this right here is the equilibrium. And when we were graphing out, like say if you take um, a cosine graph, right? And you're graphing cosine and it would be like this, right? That part right here, the x-axis would be in equilibrium. So that means is that we just took the entire graph and we shifted it up to the equilibrium right there. Now, what is that line? So we can take a look at this is going to be two, right? So that's two meters above the bottom of the pool plus an additional six. And so it looks like the equilibrium line is gonna be at eight. Okay, so, and we're shifting upwards. And so we have D equaling eight. So now let's put all the pieces back together to form our final function, okay? So we end up with the final form, and I'm gonna write it over here, is going to be the height, let's just call it height above bottom pool, so H, with respect two seconds is going to give me six cosine, okay, pi over eight T minus pi over eight plus eight, okay? And so um, the best thing that we can do at this point is uh, graph it out. And I'm gonna do my graphing on Desmos uh, just because it's easy for me to hit the points on there and do multiple things. Um, I'm gonna be creating some videos that have to do with uh, doing these out on your graphing calculators a little bit later, but let's just use Desmos um, to see where this thing is going. So I'm gonna end this part of the video right now uh, to keep the time down, and then we'll go on to using uh, the Desmos graph to answer the questions below. Okay, after plugging the equation into uh, Desmos, it looks like we did a pretty good job, okay? So it looks like after one second, um, Dr. Fitzwhiskers in his inner tube is going to be 14 meters above the bottom of the pool. And then at nine seconds, he's gonna be two meters and then right back up to 17, 14, which is exactly uh, what we went ahead and we planned out in our sketch, okay? So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna answer the questions below, all right, using the calculator because we don't know how to solve trigonometric functions all that well quite yet. We're gonna get there, so. It says, um, what is Dr. Fitzwhiskers' height from the bottom of the pool um, at 21 seconds, all right? So um, this is how we're going to go ahead and knock that out. Since we know the equation already, uh, basically we're just gonna put it into um, our calculator here and we want to make sure that we're in radians okay because uh, it looks like we got these guys right here um, that are going to um, if we're in degrees it's going to be off and so what we want to do is um, we said the height okay because it's asking for the height after since this is in seconds we're going to go h of 21 all right so we plug 21 in for t and we get okay it looks like we're going to get eight, okay? So um, it looks like that it, after 21 seconds, so you know how I am about this, after 21 seconds, Dr. Fitzwhiskers is eight meters above the bottom of the pool. All right, so there's that. Now, um, and to see how this unfolds graphically, uh, we can take a look at this. Okay, so again, graphically, 
So we got our 21 seconds and eight feet. And that is the next question here. And this one's a little bit more tricky. It says, at what times is Dr. Fitzwhiskers 10 feet? Oops, you know what? Uh, let's change that. That is a typo. Uh, 10 meters, okay, above the bottom of the pool, okay? And so uh, that means is that we're going to uh, do something a little bit different. Again, I'm going to do it on Desmos. And um, writing the solution might be kind of tricky, like, uh, for example, uh, naming all the x-intercepts of the sine wave and cosine wave. We're going to have to create little functions uh, to, uh, to answer this. So let's get the graph going and then um, see how we do this out. Okay, so what I did in Desmos is that I put in our functions. It looks like a lot uh, here at first, but it's really kind of uh, straightforward when we start to understand it. So of course this part right here is going to be our h of t, okay? And what I did is that I went ahead and I put in for the line that you see that's just kind of like the straight line streaking across with all the, um, that's intersecting that uh, graph is going to be h equals 10, okay? So you notice that all of these right here is when Dr. Fitzwhiskers is 10 feet above the bottom of the pool, okay? So these intersections are going to be all the times in which, um, depending on how long that he stays in the pool, um, is going to be the uh, the 10 meters uh, above the, the bottom of the pool there, okay? So to write this, you notice that the distances are not the same, okay? This distance is not the same as this distance, okay? And so therefore, what we need to do is that we need to take a look at, all right, well, our first instance of this guy right here. That is, is that when Dr. Fitzwhiskers is 10 feet, no, 10 meters, I keep saying feet, so if I say it again, it's meters. And the next time he is moving down is going to be right here. And the next time he is going to be moving down is right here, okay? So it looks like what is the difference in time in between each of those? And it looks like it's a plus 16 every single time, okay? And that goes on uh, forever, all right? So that said, is that the way that we're going to write that, okay? So it's asking us, and I'm gonna scroll back here, at what times, okay? And so we're just gonna go t equals, and we're going to use the first positive one, Okay, which is going to be 4.135 seconds plus 16n, where n is an integer. Okay, so now we have to also, okay, and this is the first time that we're doing this, and t equals, and now when he is going up on the wave, which is going to start here, and you notice it's going to have the same amount, a plus 16, and the same amount that is going to go ahead and go here, a plus 16, oops, I only wrote a six. And so therefore, we're going to take the first positive value, t equals 13.865 plus 16, n, where n is an integer, okay? And that is just basically the answer of the last problem there. I'm just not going to go ahead and cut and paste it and put it on there. So you will have to use technology for that. It's okay to use Desmos um, in the beginning, but we do want to kind of triage our self on over to the graphing calculator um, as soon as we feel comfortable with that. So um, that ends the video series on the first example. And so let's take a look at the getting the second one going. Okay, example number two. And this one has to do with a windmill. And it's in Hamstertown, USA. And it spins around in a counterclockwise direction. It says the bottom of the uh, blades, blade tips of the windmill are 96 feet above the ground. 
and when they spin around, they are 328 feet above the ground. The blades spin in a circular fashion at a rate of two rotations per minute. The blades, or the blade that you are tracking, starts at the very bottom. Given that information, do the following. So it looks like, let's make a sketch of what's going on here. So um, let's take a look at the blade that we are tracking, which is going to be on the very bottom here. Okay. And what's going to happen is that that blade is going to spin around and go up here and then spin around and it is going to create this type of wave right here. And so we're going to go up then down and then up and then down and it looks like that since we got the two rotations per minute that this is going to give us that one minute worth of, oh boy, that line's crookedy. So that's gonna be one minute, all right? And the uh, this line right here is just a representation of the ground. Okay, and so, um, kind of decorating up this, uh, this picture a little bit more too, is that we want to maybe throw in some um, some of these heights that were given. It says that this is going to start off 96 feet above the ground, the bottom, and it's going to max out all the way at, what is that, 328 feet above the ground, okay? So um, that helps us uh, start to go ahead and put together this business of uh, trying to figure out how um, how to craft our, our our wave here okay and it looks like it, it might be best to use a cosine wave again uh, simply because it has if you notice is that it starts like this and then goes like this however the cosine wave it seems like it needs to start flipped so um, just keeping that in our back pocket when we start answering some of these other questions so, um, with this in mind, I'm going to go ahead and I feel like we should tackle this part next, a little bit out of order. And I'm going to create a larger graph so we can really decorate it up because it's be a little bit too smashed in there for me to, uh, to do out. So, um, let's do that. So, in this next part, let's create a graph from this, uh, this windmill sketch here and uh, see where that takes us. Okay, so what I want to do is that uh, let's get some labels on these first. So this is going to be time in seconds here. Oops. And this is going to be height. Okay, and that's going to be in feet. And uh, let's start putting some nice points on here. So it looks like when we start tracking this right here, when it first begins, it's going to be at time is going to be zero. And it looks like if you look right here, again, is what I'm talking about, is that the blade is going to start 96 feet above the ground. So let's get that point on there. And so that's going to give me a zero comma 96, right? And then it's going to go all the way up here, okay? So just kind of modeling this out, it's gonna go all the way up here and max out at, it looks like 328 feet. Now, um, the thing is, is that we have to find the Y value. And so since this is time in seconds here, because it wants us in seconds, uh, just kind of reading this on over here, um, is that if it goes through the cycle twice in um, in one minute, so it looks like it's going to go through a uh, half, right, right here in about 15 seconds. So I'll write that in a different color, set it off. So after 15 seconds, okay, it's going to be at its max. And then it's going to be coming back down like that. And so after 30 seconds, it's going to be right here, go 30, I'm up back at 96 feet. And then it is going to go, whoops, 
it is going to go back up like that and then um, come back down and then uh, from there on out it's just going to spin to infinity there or spin is whenever you whatever turn off a windmill I don't know how you do that but um, you go 45 seconds let's just make sure that we are putting all the pieces on here nicely so when we do a graph um, then it's going to be really nice for us to uh, to check these points okay so that seems pretty reasonable so far okay um, and so what we want to do is uh, maybe start to put together some of the pieces for the trig um, section which it looks like when I say trig building the trig function uh, based on that graph because it looks like it has a lot of good stuff on it so um, let's start working on that and so that's going to conclude the uh, sketch of the graph here and uh, let's see if we can get that trig function all set up okay here we go so as discussed a little bit earlier we said that um, what we want to do is that for trig what we, we want to use cosine here okay and um, what we need to do is that for cosine we need to make sure that it is going to be flipped so a is going to be negative when we um, build the final thing so I'm just gonna put a negative sign here because cosine is starting at the bottom rather than the top like it typically does okay so now we need to find out what is going to be um, the magnitude here so the way that we find that out it looks like we can just subtract right the um, the minimum rather uh, from the maximum and then divide it by 2 and that should give us our numbers that we need okay so subtracting uh, the maximum from the minimum is going to give us 232 okay and we want to find the middle of that which is going to be right in the middle there okay and when I say middle um, this is what we're finding these distances right here okay and so uh, to find right in the middle let's divide that by 2 that's going to give us 116 and so it looks like um, each one of these guys are going to be 116 116 116 so it's um, basically if you think about it that's the length of each blade then it's going to be 116 feet okay so again it's starting at the bottom so it's going to be a negative 116 starting off all right so we got that all put together now um, what we need to do is that we need to figure out the period and to figure out the period remember the definition is going to be when the function starts to repeat itself so I'm going to grab this chunk right here okay and let's take a look at um, using the same method that we did in the previous video uh, how to go ahead and knock that thing out okay so by the looks of it, just using what we know about the graph and whatnot, is that the period of our function is going to be 30, okay? So that's going to be 30 seconds. And to find the period, typically we're going to go 2 pi divided by b. And so what we want to do is that combine these statements up and we can... Uh, basically since we know what the period is 30 we'll plug this in and solve for B so we get 30 equals 2 pi divided by B and the B and the 30 are going to switch places and we're going to get pi um, divided by 15 it looks like all right so we got pi divided by 15 for B now the cool part about this one is is that the phase shift okay is going to be zero and the reason why we know that is that it's uh, when you have a minimum or maximum that is starting on um, basically the y-axis there is that we don't have to shift it left or right any um, because it's just starting right there um, and to mess with it it would be kind of making more work on ourselves okay so there's not going to be any phase shift However, we do have to determine um, how high up in the air that this thing has um, been shifted vertically. 
So what we need to do is that we need to think about the following. So let's look at our graph. I'm going to just do a real quick um, sketch part of the graph right here. And so we can put these pieces together. All right. And we'll need this and we'll need this. And this is not to scale by any means. And right in the center there. Do, 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 do. This is going to be 116. We know that much. Okay. And then we also know that this is going to be, this distance is going to be 90. Oops. Let's use a different color so it doesn't look all weird. Um, is going to be 96. So therefore, if I add those two up, uh, that is going to give me, what, 212? And so, I know that this entire distance that the entire graph has been raised vertically is going to be 212. And so that is going to be what D is, alright? So, putting all these pieces together, I'm going to move this guy out of the way. And then we're going to do our digital part in a minute. I don't know why my eraser is so small at this minute. Yeah, all right. So putting these together, I'm going to get h of t, so height with respect to time, is going to be a negative 116 cosine and pi over 15 t and then plus to 12 at the very end. Okay. So, um, that said, that's how we do that part. And uh, in the next part, we're going to start by checking and seeing if we're correct. I got a hunch we are, though. And um, in using Desmos to answer the questions on the bottom. So, I'll see you in the next video. Okay, so here's what uh, Desmos has to say about our graph. And it, uh, I think it looks pretty good. Um, it has all the points, so if we check all of our lower points right here with our sketch on the previous page, eh, we're, we're doing good, okay? And likewise, these, the 15, the 45 at 328, it looks like those are good too, okay? So we know that we got a nice solid graph that's going to model um, the windmill accurately. So what we need to do is that we need to use the... Um, digital parts now for or the uh, you know your graphing calculator or Desmos for this particular time and um, see if we could answer these questions below okay and so when I say below all the way down over here it says a hamster engineer needs some data it says use the work above to finish what she asks so it's, it wants to know uh, what is the height of the tip of the blade after 3.75 seconds and is the blade moving up or down at that point so um, let's go ahead and check that out and we're going to use the function that we built and we're going to go h of 3.75 seconds and find out what that is and then we're going to take a look at the graph and see if the blade is moving the tip of the blade is moving up or down okay so from our function we plug 3.75 in and we get 129.976 out. And so moving on to, you can just get that from your calculator. Um, but the second part is the blade moving up or down. Let's take a look at a graph here um, generated in Desmos. Okay. And so writing the answer to the questions it says, uh, basically after 3.75 seconds, the blade is 129.976 feet above the ground whoops and is and it looks like well it's moving up okay so it is started at the bottom and now is moving on up Okay, and so ping above the ground and is moving up. Okay, so that's how you would answer a question like that, just based on your, again, your, the function that you built and the graph that it creates. So for the next part, 
um, we are looking at so the very last one says when is does I don't know why I wrote that so one of my many typos says um, when does the tip of the blade reach 200 feet for the fifth time is the blade moving up or down at that time so uh, the way to do it right now because we don't have again we, we don't know how to solve those equations um, by hand uh, we're gonna take a look at a graph and uh, here's a graph that's generated um, Desmos and again this is right here this is going to be the where the height is going to be 200 okay and this of course is our H of T okay the windmill blade spinning back and forth and so this is the first time it reaches 200 second third fourth and fifth so it looks like my solution is going to be 67.005 seconds so we want to go ahead and say the blade reaches the height of 200 feet at for I forgot to say for the fifth time after 67.005 seconds okay and then we can see again the blades going up so the blade is going up okay. so um, that completes the two examples um, and in the practice that follows is this going to be kind of like a um, a potpourri of all these uh, these different aspects here and uh, so give them a try and uh, let me know if you have any questions and until then I will see you in the next video